Hello and welcome to this video in which we introduce the discrete time Fourier series. The discrete time Fourier series, which is actually um, very similar to the discrete Fourier transform, it differs somewhat in the notation that we use and uh, there's constants uh, that are different, but other than that it's essentially the same thing, at least in terms of how it's computed. Um, but for the discrete time Fourier series, the idea is that we have a signal x of n, um, which shows up right here and right here. Uh, x of n is periodic. Whoops, what on earth happened there? Periodic with period n. And uh, this from x of n will compute a set of Fourier series coefficients, which are the c sub k's. So these are the Fourier series coefficients. And there will actually be n distinct Fourier series coefficients. Uh, it turns out um, that uh, the Fourier series coefficients are periodic as well uh, with period n. And so they'll end up being n uh, distinct values, and then they repeat. So this is different from the continuous time Fourier series, in which you have an infinite number of coefficients. For the discrete time Fourier series, you have a finite number of coefficients uh, from a, and you have the same number of coefficients as you have uh, samples of your signal. So these two formulas that we have here um, represent uh, the the uh, analysis and synthesis equations. Uh, if I have the time waveform, x of n, from this equation I can find the Fourier series coefficients. This notation here says that n uh, is, uh, the summation goes over one period of x of n. So it could go from 0 to cap n minus 1, or it could go from, um, if cap n is even, it could go from minus uh, cap n over 2 plus 1 to cap n over 2. It goes over one period of the waveform. And uh, down here, uh, this summation, which gives us the original time signal in terms of the Fourier series coefficients, the summation here is also over one period uh, so k could go from 0 to cap n minus 1, for example. Okay, um, so this is the way that we can find the Fourier series coefficients. Uh, this is the way that we can reconstruct the time signal. Now, in this video, uh, we'll also uh, go through a couple of different time waveforms and we'll actually find the c sub k's, we'll find these Fourier series coefficients, but we'll do it without using this whole summation formula, because the summation formula can actually be quite difficult to evaluate, and sometimes you don't have to. What we'll actually do is uh, we'll write x of n, and then see if we can get it in a form that looks like this, and if we can get it in a form that looks like this, a constant times uh, complex exponentials, then we can actually figure out what the from what the constant and the complex exponentials are, what the Fourier series coefficients are. So that's our goal. Um, again, in the rest of this video is to find a couple or do a couple of examples where we can find the uh, Fourier series coefficients without working this whole summation. Uh, in subsequent videos, uh, we'll work the summation and see what we get. So the first example, and this is something that you see quite often, is x of n is a cosine waveform, a periodic discrete time cosine. Uh, you might think of this as actually samples from a continuous cosine waveform. Okay, and what we want to do is find the discrete time Fourier series coefficients of xn. And again, the way we're going to do that is take x of n and write it in this form so that we can actually just see what c sub k and the e to the j k n 2 pi over cap n. We can actually just see those. So we'll do that using Euler's formula. 
which hopefully by now you've uh, memorized. A cosine of 2 pi over 8n can be written as 1 half e to the j 2 pi over 8n plus e to the minus j 2 pi over 8n. Okay, now I should have, I should back up here for just a second. We know that uh, due to the structure of the cosine waveform that the period of this signal is 8. Okay, so we know down here that this is cap n. We have lowercase n here. Um, we have the 2 pi and the j. These terms, um, you know, we have the 2 pi and the j. And so from this, we can figure out what k ought to be. And if we look at this guy, um, it will turn out that k is equal to 1. In this guy, it will turn out that k is equal to minus 1. That's where we get this minus sign here. Now you're thinking to yourself, wait, you said that uh, k could go from 0 to n minus 1 or something like that. And I'll come back to this. We'll use the fact that the Fourier series coefficients are periodic to see what value of k this, what other values of k this could correspond to. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we can write this as 1 half e to the j, and I'm going to explicitly write 1 times 2 pi over 8n plus e to the j, explicitly write minus 1, 2 pi, oops, and I left my 1 half out here, 2 pi over 8n, okay? So again, I've identified k is equal to 1 here and k is equal to minus 1 here. This 1 half is the coefficient in front of this term where k is equal to 1. So I can say then that this is c of 1. Okay, again, if I go back and look at the form of this equation, I have a constant times this complex exponential. And that's exactly what I have here. So I also, here with this half, I have c of minus 1. Okay, and you'll notice I don't have any complex exponentials with other values of k than these two. So what that means is that ck is equal to 0 for other values of k. Okay, so what we've done is we've actually found the discrete time Fourier series coefficients of xn without having to go through this potentially ugly summation here. Instead, we've just broken it up and we've looked at what, they, what the Fourier series coefficients look like. So the last thing we need to look at is if c minus 1 bothers you, which hopefully it doesn't, but I can see why it might, these Fourier series coefficients are periodic with period n, which in this case is 8. So c minus 1 is the same as c7. So if you don't want to have negative uh, discrete time Fourier series coefficients, or indices for discrete time uh, Fourier series coefficients, you can call this c sub 7. And I'll leave it as an exercise to you as an interested viewer to show that e to the j minus 1, 2 pi, 8 n is the same as e to the j 7, 2 pi over 8 n. Okay, so this is one example, and again, uh, this shows up a lot, at least in signal processing texts. Um, and so this is, it's helpful to be able to find these uh, Fourier series coefficients without doing the summation. So we'll quickly do one other example. Suppose I have x of n is sine 2 pi over 10 n. Well, in this case, the period, cap n, is going to be 10. The sequence is periodic with period 10 samples. And I can figure out what the c sub k's are by just writing this as 1 over 2j 
e to the j 2 pi over 10 n minus e to the minus j 2 pi over 10 n. Okay? And again, we start identifying the pieces of this complex exponential. We have the j, which we were used to, uh, the 2 pi, which we had before, n is equal to 10, cap n, and lowercase n. So this means that k is equal to 1 here. And similarly, as before, k is equal to minus 1 here. Okay, we can multiply out this uh, coefficient, so we'll have 1 over 2j e to the j 2 pi over 10n. I can actually put a 1 in there to explicitly show the k is equal to 1, minus 1 over 2j e to the j minus 1 2 pi over 10n. Okay, so as before, I look at this and I immediately notice that this is C1 and that this term is C minus 1. And since the period is 10, this is also the same as C9. So, there you have it. Um, in this video, we've introduced the discrete time Fourier series uh, and we've shown one way of finding discrete time Fourier series coefficients for uh, sampled sine and cosine waveforms that don't require you to work any summations at all. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.